I fixed and flashed all of my power reiterate room sensor prototypes. Now it's time to assemble this leak new case, which looks way cooler than the old one, upgrade my switch and mount the new sensor to the ceiling. And no, this video isn't sponsored by Ubiquiti. I already used their 24 port power reiterate switch and love it. So I'm excited to upgrade. Is this 48 port power over Ethernet switch completely overkill for my ESP home room sensors? Absolutely. Could I justify it anyway? You bet I did. My grand plan is to have one switch powering our entire home network. It handles gigabit Ethernet, which is perfect since we don't have any faster networking devices yet. My wallet is already hiding in fear of future upgrades. Now, you might be wondering, why not just add a second cheap power over Ethernet switch to your existing setup? Great question. It all comes down to power consumption. Here in Austria, power bills hit hard. Running an additional network switch is like buying a slice of Sachertorte every other week. I did the math. So running a single more efficient network switch makes sense. This 48 port switch only consumes 10 watts more than my current 24 port version. I did check out their fancy new switches with ether lighting, but they're even more power hungry, so I passed. And let's be honest, how often would I use ether lighting? Probably just to impress visitors when showing off my shiny server rack. One feature that I'm excited about is power redundancy. This could be crucial if I start using my sensors as part of a smoke detection or alarm system. And before the comment section explodes, no. These aren't legal smoke detectors. They're supplements to my existing detectors, giving me the bonus of room by room alerts, alarm in every room and smartphone notifications if smoke is detected. Please still comment below. It helps the algorithm and I read every single one. And please also hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free and helps the channel more than you know. But now let's assemble this beautiful case. This is the version without additional sensors. I will first mount this one and do a long-term test and see if everything works stable and also if the motion detector works. So this thing will be mounted to the ceiling and then you just snap this in and it should stick to the ceiling. Worst case, it still has an ethernet cable, right? What could go wrong? But first, let me remove the old one. I got some complaints about its appearance. One problem of the old design was this flexing here. And this should be solved with the new design. I think this looks way better. The light also adds a nice touch and the built-in infrared LEDs can be used as remote control. The new movement sensor offers a significant advantage. No more false alarms. However, this comes with reduced sensitivity compared to the previous model. When testing the detection area, I found a concerning discrepancy. The datasheet promised a minimum of 97 degrees detection angle, but my tests consistently showed a maximum of only 60 degrees, a substantial difference. Initially, I suspected the sensor's case might be restricting the field of view, but removing it produced identical results. Since these sensors detect temperature changes, I realized a potential issue. During testing, the floor heating system was running at full power, minimizing the temperature difference between my legs and the floor. Could this explain the poor detection performance? 
I'm currently using the standard version of the movement sensor. Would you recommend trying a different model? If so, which one would you suggest? So I put the cap back on and I will continue to test this. And then also I will take a look at the millimeter wave sensor that I have. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the new design. And if you're interested in getting one for yourself, please go to playduino.com slash sensor and sign up to my email list. And I will let you know as soon as they are available. I printed this on my old 3D printer, so I'm not really happy with the quality. I should get my new printer in two weeks. I actually ordered the kit version of Prusa Core 1. I was thinking maybe I will do a live stream of assembling the thing. Might be interesting. I won't be able to cut out all of my mistakes like I do right now. Would be fun, I think. Check out my project playlist if you're interested. There are a lot of interesting videos inside. See you in the next video.